Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, while it's converting, and briefly introduce myself and my group. So actually, my group is based both at Yandex uh, and Higher School of Economics. And we used to work together with uh, physics or natural science experiments. Uh, for example, my group is a member of LHCB experiment at CERN, and uh, members of my group member of uh, OPERA experiment at Italy, and then a few others. And uh, I'm going to talk about one of the uh, examples uh, of the applications of deep learning tools and methods, that's what my group is doing, to uh, the domain of natural science experiments. So uh, here's a, a few mysteries of our universe that are still unsolved, uh, that, that, that uh, physicists, uh, that they're lying on the table of physicists and they're trying to peer, to, to see, to understand what, what, what is it? And the experiment I'm going to talk about is about uh, uh, deadly particles or high energy cosmic rays that uh, hit Earth quite well, rare. Uh, and and when, when such a particle arrives to the atmosphere of the Earth, it produces a huge uh, shower of, of uh, common particles like photons, electrons, muons. And, and uh, the, the, the square, uh, the area under this shower is uh, measured by thousands of, of square kilometers. So it's a it's, it's very big uh, bunch of particles uh, with, with uh, regular energies that started from the particle with, with really high energy. So just to, just to compare, the, the best possible accelerator on Earth that can speed up particles that, that can, can produce particles with the energy 10 to the 12, which is 1 million less than the particles that, that produces such a huge shower. And the, uh, once it was recorded by uh, Fly-I experiment in 1991, uh, the, 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 the biggest, biggest possible, uh, the most energetic pa particle is the one with uh, uh, energy 10 to 10 to 20 electron volts, which uh, is, is quite astonishing, and they named it "Oh my God" particle. <laughs> and 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 uh, th those are very rare. And the idea of the Crayfish experiment uh, is uh, instead of uh, building a regular observatory. By the way, uh, the one that that is working at the moment, uh, observatory of Pierre Roger in South Africa, uh, South uh, America. Uh, it's, it's a huge area of 3,000 square kilometers covered with uh, detect particle uh, detectors, uh, a few hundred particle detectors, and uh, it costs a lot. So the idea of this experiment is to uh, use mobile phone camera of, uh, of end users, uh, since those uh, phones have, have uh, sensitive element that can detect the presence of the particle, interaction of the particle with the phone, so if we collect carefully information about uh, such interactions, we can uh, somehow uh, deduce the energy of the original particle, uh, if we will be careful enough. So this is the idea, idea of the experiment in a nutshell. <laughs> so we have particles flying, uh, flying all around, and uh, actually the, 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 the uh, they're quite rare, and use smartphones for this. Uh, and by the way, those pictures by the, uh, were drawn uh, as illustrations to the book written by the author or of, of the orig original idea of this experiment, Daniel Whiteson, <laughs> titled, We Have No Idea. Uh, so the challenges from the physics point of view of this experiment uh, is uh, that, that, that um, particles are rare, so uh, if, if the background that you have to deal with arrives with uh, very frequent, uh, is frequent, so more than 1,000 per square kilometer, but things that we are looking for is less than one per year per square kilometer. And uh, the, the, the exact, exact shower uh, that, that happens after, after this, such particle hits the atmosphere is in, in time less than microseconds. So the, the data processing challenges here is how do you uh, 
I, and, and, and one thing that those particles are one of the most energetic uh, particles that, that, that uh, get out of the shower are muons. But the thing is that uh, smartphone cameras are not well tuned to the muons. So we can, we can catch photons and catch electrons, but uh, for muons, we, we don't know how they, how they interact with the camera. So we don't have exact measurements. So we don't have realistic uh, images of, of muon tracks. We have somehow uh, generate, uh, generated and, and believe in this, in those images. Another thing, uh, since the software has to work on a smartphone, it has to be fast. And it has to work with uh, megapixel size of images, like uh, to, to, to process those images at uh, rather high uh, frequency, uh, 10, 10 hertz. And another thing is limit that, that the throughput of the smartphone connection is limited. So if the smartphone detects something, it has to send it uh, somewhere else to the, to the processing servers. And, and uh, we cannot send every frame. We, we need to carefully select uh, those that contain meaningful information for further analysis. So, so and those are challenges. The first one is getting realistic images of the uh, muons and uh, making algorithm work on a smartphone. We, we try to uh, tackle from deep learning perspective. So the first one is uh, getting realistic images of muons. Basically, uh, we have a simulator that, uh, that is called Giant. It's a state-of-the-art simulator in high-energy physics. And of course, we can uh, make kind of an image of the, of the particle that hits a sensor of a smartphone. Uh, but uh, realistic images of those smartphones in, in, in introduce uh, different kinds of noise. Uh, thermals, thermal noise, uh, redoubt noise, uh, etc. So the realistic images um, looks more like more like this. Um, and uh, the thing is that every every phone model has own parameters of the uh, redoubt system. So you don't uh, you 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 could, should be able to calibrate uh, somehow images from from this domain to the domain of the phone model. Uh, so, uh, for, for, for uh, this task, we try to see if we can apply generative adversarial networks. And uh, as a data set, we use uh, simulated images uh, by Giant, so as a, as a source of uh, uh, as a source of the uh, uh, simulated images for, for a generator, source of the generator. And real images that we get after putting the phone uh, in front of radioactive source that, that collect some, some muons. But the thing is that we don't have labels in this data source. Uh, and the approximate ratio of signal to background is one to, uh, one to thousand. And uh, a few uh, experiments uh, with, with uh, various uh, gun architectures show that classical gun doesn't uh, well deal well with I images and converge uh, rather slowly. Uh, cycle gun uh, should help uh, things uh, a little bit, uh, finding one-to-one -one mapping between our simulated sample and real images sample because we need to be make sure that such uh, uh, such mapping exists in principle, and energy uh, energy based gun uh, we try to uh, speed up things a bit, but still it, it wasn't success mainly because of this uh, very very uh, disbalanced data set. So we thought if we can add physics based insights into the uh, gun and, and see if it can improve the speed of convergence. And um, so the, the, uh, with, with uh, first trick that, that we uh, used there, that we called impor important sampling for a batch of real images. Uh, so we increased number of events with uh, higher signal probability. Um, and reweight uh, re the total, the, the, the reweight those uh, images uh, just to keep the distribution uh, the same. Uh, so basically, if, uh, if you have very big amount of noise and we, we sample without such resampling, we, great chances are that we pick only noise 
and no no signal there, and the gradient will will point to uh, the, the 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 minimum that is essentially makes the generator produces just just noise, no no traces of signal. So this is one trick, and another trick is uh, uh, for the for the generator part um, that, that that deals with uh, simulated images. So we we notice um, that there there is a frequency of of tracks uh, happening inside the image, and and uh, it is kind of Poissonian process. So uh, we, we can take this into account and uh, group uh, all, all generated images into the beams uh, that are weighted according to the number of tracks there and, and weights, uh, weights of those beams are, uh, so, uh, somehow match the uh, weights of the redistribution uh, coefficient of a Poissonian process. So, the, in, in other words, we have to learn this lambda parameter that is somehow embedded in the real in the real data, but we want the generator to be uh, somehow aware of this, and learn this parameter, uh, uh, given the sample of the data and. And, and, and tell us what is the best possible lambda, so we can we can learn it through the iterative process of uh, uh, training the generator and discriminator. So this is just just a technical overview of of the of the of the pro of this design process. So we used uh, energy-based gun for faster convergence, cycle gun to ensure bijection mapping between simulated domain and real domain and uh, batch weighting to ensure convergence. Uh, so for the real images, it's important sampling, and for generated samples, uh, it's a physics process parameter lambda that we need to learn from the, from the data during this uh, training process. So uh, uh, to construct the generator, we make a few assumptions that look uh, quite realistic. The first one is uh, observed samples uh, a result of the two independent process, it's a noise and the tracks that can be added on top of each other. And uh, simulation results uh, can, can be in, in some way mixed with the uh, noise uh, that, that we can simulate uh, separately. Uh, simulation process is local, so uh, the, the ener it means that the particle that hits a sensor of the camera, it interacts only on, on pixels that are local to the place of the exact heat. And uh, brightness of the uh, CMOS pixel is functional dependency of the energy deposited there. It's also a realistic approach. So the structure of the generator looks like this. So we, uh, here we have a source of the noise, uh, initial random uh, uniform noise. We add uh, two convolutional layers to change distribution of the noise uh, to make it a little bit more realistic. And here is the input of the giant uh, simulated images that, that, that mix together and a few uh, convolutional uh, layers to, to make it more realistic and then transform to the brightness. So very simple generator structure and the whole uh, gun uh, is is basically use a cycle gun approach. So we start from simulator, uh, generate real image, uh, and and then make a reverse transformation uh, to, to to the original domain. And discriminator has uh, both uh, both both uh, terms that, that deal with the, with the similarity between similar <laughs> generated uh, generated uh, real and generated. Uh, simulation. Uh, here is a loss function in more details, and the result is quite uh, promising. You, you don't see here, <laughs> sorry, uh, I, I have to adjust the, the brightness, but uh, if, if you look offline, the, there is a traces of, this, of, the, of the images of the, of the tracks, uh, uh, and, and uh, th these are images of the uh, those, the same tracks that, that has been generated by, by our gun, and, and these are how ground truth images look like. And uh, just as a cross check of the, uh, the, the, the validity of the approach, so the, the, here is a pixel brightness uh, of the uh, resulting real image, 
and it's a, just a histogram. So in, in case of uh, ground truth, uh, it's a red line and uh, party gun is blue one. So it looks quite similar. That, that gives us hope that we didn't uh, mix anything here. So it, it, it works quite well. Uh, so the summary of the first part, uh, we, we, we create this party gun that uh, is capable of learning actual uh, physical process that happens uh, in the real data and learn, uh, uh, learn how to deal with uh, uh, corrections and, and, and various kinds of noise that happen inside the camera of the phone. And uh, this um, party gun... Um, Pro provide matches between simulation of uh, real observation, similar to cycle gun, and can be generalized to any kind of particle. And we can uh, generate realistic looking muon tracks. So we can proceed to the next part uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the challenge, uh, running the uh, algorithm on a real mobile phone. So the challenges here, uh, I, I mentioned them before, shortage of the resources and throughput and uh, really uh, uh, have, have to deal with a uh, big amount of, of data. You don't, it, it's an exa example of, a, of the single snapshot. Don't see probably here much, even I don't see, but the <laughs> in the slides there is, so there are, uh, it's a bit of uh, information, it's a track, and this is enlarged version of the track. And it's the same here and, and the same here. Mm, yeah, no, no, reddish, it's, it's just, uh, it's, uh, uh, manual adding. So the, the, the track original are uh, <coughs> just a spot here, and the, this uh, red thing is a, it just zoom in to this part of the image. So here, here is a uh, really enlarged uh, traces of, of photons. Uh, so I'm speaking about photons uh, here because this part historic of, of research has happened before the party gun has finished which is still uh, not, not, not completely finished, but here we played with the photons. And uh, where the assumption that we made that the minimally uh, ionizing particle with muon uh, is, is uh, interacting in the, way, in the same way as a photon, but the brightness of the track is much lower. So it's comparable to the brightness of the noise on the, on the camera. So this is basically uh, gives us a uh, requirement that the shape recognition of the track is, is uh, required. So uh, we employed, um, a, a, a d designed a w w clone of convolutional neural network that uh, deals with the uh, whole image and, and the, the, those cascade neural networks in the work in a way that every cascade uh, tries to reduce amount of work for the next cascade. Uh, here is an illustration of the single cascade. So we have the input image and we have kind of activation map that, that we get from the previous cascade. And the, we apply convolutions only to the areas where this activation map is uh, tells to do so. And after um, after applying the convolution, we, we get up activation map for the next layer, a cascade. So the, na the, the overall uh, structure of those cascades looks like this. We connect them uh, one to each other, and the, uh, with every next cascade, we reduce amount of uh, convolution, number of convolutions, because we learn uh, the uh, most active, uh, po most possible areas where tracks can come from or can, can be at. Here is a way how it is trained, but I'll skip it uh, because we have no time. But the proof of the concept, uh, just on the left, we have um, those track of the photons. We reduce the intensity and to, to, to the level where uh, you, don't, uh, you cannot select them just by looking at the brightness of the picture. You have to look at the shape of the uh, track and, and emerge, uh, embed it into the space of the noise. So you see it's, it's there, but you cannot use just brightness selection. And the baseline is actually an algorithm that uh, implies uh, a brightness cut. Of course, if you s give um, a pro proper, proper threshold for this cut, it will select all the signal, but it <laughs> will select all the background as well 
which is not, not very good. But uh, this is robust and this is fast, but, but not very useful. So the result of the network of, the, of this structure uh, gives uh, the total complexity uh, factor 25 less than the complexity of the full CNN and uh, with, with uh, complexity relative to the baseline, like 1.4, you can get, uh, recall, 0 0.95 and precision 0 0.39. So just to illustrate, here's uh, uh, those, those um, precision, precision recall uh, curves, and this is complexity 2.0, this is complexity 1.4, and uh, this, uh, this is a baseline, so it gives, it's actually a point, but, but just uh, to illustrate the, the comparison. Um, so this is basically the final slide of the talk. Uh, the, the Crayfish experiment is aimed at uh, solving one of the biggest uh, mysteries of our universe. And uh, since it is rely it's a almost a minimal budget experiment, it, 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 and there is a lot of uncertainty. Uh, no labels, uh, smartphones, and, and uh, you have to invent, come up with plenty of tricks, and thankfully deep learning can uh, be a good source of such tricks. So we uh, designed a gun, gun architecture that can generate realistically looking images from the simulation and cascade uh, convolutional neural networks that are uh, capable of processing the, the real images on a smartphone. Uh, yeah, so basically the work is going on and uh, in, in, in the context of the deep learning <coughs> there are a few things to be invented and added to the experiment. <laughs> uh, of course, this solution can be generalized to other domain. I mean, the image segmentation and, and generation. But uh, I think this is enough for, for now, and uh, I would be happy to answer questions. Thank you. So in the, in the early uh, drawings, you showed that, uh, I think, multiple uh, uh, folds would be uh, influence at the same time. Are you using that information that they should, that there's some simultaneous uh, impression at multiple phones? Do, do you mean, uh, do you mean? Was that like the second slide? No, no, way earlier. <laughs> the, the drawing you were, sure, yeah, that all these, uh, I guess, Phones on the, uh, the bottom would this actually be impressed at the same time. Yes. Yeah, the idea is that uh, people have to switch on the phone with the application running during the night. During the night. Yeah. Uh, sure. Nobody yeah. sleeps, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but are, are they? Are, are you using the fact that they are all going to be simultaneously yeah. getting the information? Yeah, 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 yeah sure. It was not in, in anywhere. Well, maybe I didn't mention, but yeah, oh. it's exactly the idea. So the idea is to uh, to engage like 10, 10 million people across the globe uh, to use this application. This is <laughs> out of the uh, hope. Uh, I, well, I, at least I don't have a uh, good idea how deep learning can help here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the idea is to attract as many people as possible to this. Uh, and, and there is a website, crayfish.io. I think it's in the ref, uh, reference slide and the backup uh, that is actually uh, describes the main idea of the experiment. And there is a possibility to add yourself to a list of uh, volunteers. <laughs> Maybe I'm, I'm. So if you, so I, I, I picture myself putting my cell phone. So yeah. to say on the roof or some, something because mm -hmm. the cell phones uh, work if, even if it's raining. But, but my, my question is, do you, what kind of conditions would you need? Like, do you need clear skies or would you need, um, you know, what, in order to take these pictures? Uh, the, the idea is does, so the, you don't um, have to put your phone on, on, on any special place. You just put in a, on a drawer. Uh, on your table or, or on your table with your camera uh, laying down to the surface okay. <laughs> and, and, and this is basically it. So during the first uh, period of uh, data taking, the, the phone calibrates itself to the, to the level of, of the background. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, maybe it will ask you about the uh, altitude above the sea level, <laughs> roughly to understand the, background, the normal background on, on this level. Uh, and then it calibrates uh, to, to, to understand what's, uh, maybe if you live in, 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 a, in a hut, you don't have many concrete above you, or if you live in a uh, skyscraper on the, on the first layer, you have plenty of it <laughs> above you, so it has to calibrate. But, but other than this, you don't have to, you don't have to input anything. A very quick question. I mean, you see that this produces on the slide uh, a shower of a certain radius. Yeah. Just roughly to get just a, you know, a number out of the sky, 20% of the particles of the shower would be in, in a radius of what order? 100 meter or 5 meter or 20, 30 no, kilometers? No, here it is uh, 3 kilometers uh, by 3 kilometers. Ah, okay. So, so, so I, I don't uh, have shape exactly. Uh, I mean... Uh, what what is the uh, ninety five percent uh, coverage? But but roughly it is kilometer by kilometer. Okay. No. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, so sorry. Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. Kilometer. Uh, th th uh, yeah. Kilometer by kilometer. It's it's on a kilometer scale. Okay. Yeah. yeah great. Um, so maybe I just didn't pay attention. But what was the connection between the first experiment, the gun experiment, and the convolutional experiment? Yeah, the connection is that uh, we don't have label. So even if we expose uh, the phone to a muon source, we uh, we don't have uh, and and the muons are kind of rare uh, on the. Mm, on the on the on the phone, we we don't have labels uh, for the for the data to 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 train convolutional neural network. So we, we can have realistic images of muons, but we don't we cannot use it for, for the training. And the exercise of the of the party gun is to learn to generate realistically looking muon images. And you use those for training? Or? And and use those for training of, of the convolutional networks. And uh, but the, the the data which you use to train the gun were coming also from a simulator. I mean. uh, yeah, but these are ki kind of different simulators. Uh, so, yeah, you're you're right. For the training gun, we use simulator of the physics process that that just calculates the deposit of the energy to the to the sensor, mm -hmm. right? But uh, uh, realistically looking uh, images as we get it from the sensor is, is much com more complicated because of noise and because of some interactions that happen on pixel level. Uh, and you see it's, it's much more complicated. And uh, we, we don't have labels for those. So we can have a bunch of those images, and we know that signal is there, but we don't know where exactly. And we just need to get, using GAN, training sample for the convolutional network that will be able to run on smartphone. So what was the size of the data set you so used to train the GAN? It's an uh, order of uh, 10,000 10, uh, images. And for the convolutional? Uh, it's roughly the same. So it's uh, not, not, not very, uh, and the convolutional neural network is not very complicated. You saw there are just three convolutional layers, four, four convolutional layers. But well, why are the gun generated images more realistic than the data used for training the gun? Uh, because for, for training the gun, we don't have labels uh, for, the, for, the, for the images. So we, we, we could have like the, 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 the uh, signal to background ratio is one to a thousand. So if we, if we expose the phone to the radioactive source, we, we get thousand of, of, of nothing and, and just one uh, realistically looking muon track. And, and uh, we cannot use it for the training of anything because we don't know where is where is the moon in those thousand images. Okay, so maybe we should stop with the questions here. Um, let's thank the speaker again.